Welcome to Community Health TV powered by Community Therapy. I'm here with accredited practicing dietitian Grace and today we're talking about malnutrition and frailty. So from a dietitian's perspective, why is malnutrition and frailty important for older adults, people living with disability? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I mean, in terms of malnutrition and frailty, it is something that we see in the community um, quite often. And the reason, I guess, the, the definition of malnutrition is essentially where we're not getting enough nutrition to meet the demands of our body. And over time, um, this can lead to a number of complications. So those complications include things such as um, not only frailty, but unintentional weight loss, muscle wasting, fatigue, uh, lack of focus and concentration, as well as recurrent hospitalizations and increased risk for falls as well. Um, the way that we do identify malnutrition, so we use something called a subjective global assessment tool. And what we're looking at there is unintentional weight loss as well as one's oral intake, so how much food and fluids they're getting in a day. Um, also with that we look at muscle wasting, um, so particularly muscle wasting around our temples, triceps, biceps, leg muscles as well. Um, and yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely something that is extremely important and we need to identify. Um, so you've given a whole lot of information I have, yeah, really sorry quickly, about that. which <laughs> is <laughs> awesome. So Grace really knows her stuff on this topic, so let me try and summarise some of those key points for if you're an old adult person living with disability, but in particular other health professionals, if you're not a dietitian, but often you're identifying things to refer to a dietitian, a coordinator of support for NDIS or an aged care coordinator, you're really looking for some key things here of how do you know if somebody may be you know, living with suffering from malnutrition or maybe becoming frail. So you identified some really good things that most people can see that this may be occurring for somebody. So in particular frailty, you can often see that somebody may be frail by muscle wasting and the way that somebody is looking. You can also see that by the way somebody's moving, often they're more frail in their movement, they're slower, the risk of falls. Somebody may say that they've had a fall. And these are some small and sometimes large alarm bells that are going off for you of going, hmm, I think there's a concern here for this person. And one of those appropriate referrals is to a dietitian to make sure that they're appropriately um, being nourished, getting the right nutrition um, that's suitable for them and their care needs. So I guess other than looking and visualising, what are some other key components that somebody might be looking for? Um, Is there something that somebody might say as an old adult or are you looking for what people are eating? And yeah, absolutely. I mean, a really a big thing that, that does come up is something or a statement like, oh, I'm feeling slowed up or I'm feeling fatigue, um, perhaps napping or sleeping more often than they normally would. Um, in terms of their eating, we may be seeing, for example, that we may not be finishing meals as much as we used to. So perhaps eating less than 75% or less than 50% of a main meal. Um, it may be things like, I don't have much of an appetite anymore, and that's resulting in meal skipping or refusing, refusal of food. Um, and over time, that's when we can start to see those key red flags, um, such as unintentional weight loss over time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So key concerns with how people are eating, what they're eating and some of those things are really important and simple considerations to make. So I always find then one of the hardest things is, you know, food is quite an important thing to people. So mm -hmm. what do you say to somebody that you may be concerned of how and what and how much they're eating? So what do I say to, let's say I was concerned about my grandmother or somebody I know, what do I say? Oh, I'm concerned about how you're eating. I think you should see a dietitian. Like what's, what's a, something simple that I could say to them? Um, I would firstly actually ask, 
ask if they're concerned mm. about their eating or if they're concerned about their weight. So have they noticed any weight loss or have they noticed that they're eating less? Um, I think that's a really good question because we do um, want the clients or family or loved one to identify if it is a concern. Um, and then from there, we can make a recommendation like, you know, I would recommend that we refer to a dietitian. Um, they might be able to provide some practical strategies to help with maintaining your weight or um, helping with um, increasing your appetite and making sure you're getting enough out of each meal that you are having. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I like that. It sort of leans into person-centred. So instead of mm. you telling somebody what to do, you're asking the right question to see. They may already be aware of it and concerned, but sometimes asking that open question, they might also identify some other concerns that they just haven't said to somebody as well. So that's yeah. awesome. I think we've covered a lot. That's, I think, all we have for this episode. You can check out some of the description for some of these key tips, and we'll see you in the next episode. See ya. Bye.